The American Association of University Professors, the AAUP, has ended a nearly 20-year opposition to academic boycotts. Now, the group says boycotts can be considered legitimate tactical responses. Joining us now to discuss is Ken Tashi, Higher Education Fellow at Campus Reform, attorney and former adjunct instructor at Suffolk University. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Now, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Now, some people are pointing to the timing of this. This decision is coming in the middle of the Israel-Hamas war. And I first just want you to explain to us an academic boycott and what it looks like in practical terms when it's exercised on the ground. Sure. So uh, let me just start also by saying that the, the AAUP has been considered the primary defender of academic freedom in higher education for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. And during that time, it's been committed to preserving and advancing the free exchange of ideas between academics across town or across international borders without regard for governmental policies. And during that time, they have steadfastly opposed an academic boycott. And, and what does that look like? So in theory, an academic boycott is when an educational institution or organization uh, refuses to engage with other institutions in protest over institutional or governmental policies. In practice, that could look something like where uh, colleges and universities around the United States or elsewhere would choose to protest policies uh, by China mm -hmm. by refusing to engage with their institutions of higher education, particularly over the treatment of China's um, residents uh, with regard to the treatment of Uyghurs and Tibetans. No. Um, but it's, a, you know, it's important to note that the AUP has never endorsed uh, an academic boycott against China or any other country. Absolutely. Uh, and in fact, back in 05 and 2013, it opposed calls for academic boycotts against the state of Israel, um, um, indicating they were repugnant to their very principles and their core mission. Now, at this point, once again, the AAUP, they haven't mentioned Israel, Hamas, war, or anything dealing with Israel specifically. They only are saying this in, in, in part. Uh, these academic boycotts can be considered legitimate tactical responses to conditions that are fundamentally incapable with the mission of higher education. That's the AAUP. Um, when you hear this, and then you put it in context of everything that's going on right now, why do you think this is happening now? Well, I think this is a shift away from the AUP's historic principled stance against academic boycotts and, and embracing of an ideology that is, that is uh, driven by an anti-Israel sentiment. And uh, really, if at the core of academic freedom uh, is the ability for faculty uh, to collaborate and cooperate with their peers without interference or intrusion from their institution or from their governments, then the current position of the AUP is, is completely contrary to the, the concept of academic freedom. It will not allow faculty to engage and cooperate and collaborate with their peers. It, it will deny institutional partnerships. It will prevent student exchange programs. It will prevent uh, shared and collaborative research amongst peers at institutions. And, and again, I think that this is a seismic shift by an organization that used to stand firmly against academic boycotts and for the ever expanding and preservation of academic freedom in higher education. So you think this is actually calling into question the ability for academic freedom on college campuses? Oh, sure. Because we're really, when you think about it, um, what the AUP is saying is that uh, we're looking to, to advance and protect academic freedom by denying academic freedom uh, to individuals within certain institutions and within certain countries. And, and that really has a boomerang, boomerang effect because that affects all academics um, across, the, uh, across the scene. So it, it, it really is a seismic shift in their view and perspective and just people, uh, over, the, over the protection of academic freedom. People watching this at home may say, what does this mean for me overall? What does this mean for American society, culture? What does it mean that this is being uh, reversed in some ways? Well, because, I mean, again, at the, the core function and mission in higher education, particularly for faculty, scholars, and researchers, is to be able to have open debate, discussion, dialogue, and intellectual discourse with their peers around the world and, and around the country to advance uh, the higher education and to advance those opportunities for students. Uh, and when you now are denying those opportunities, to particular scholars and researchers and faculty and students, you really are undermining the teaching and learning process that, that is the basis for higher education. All right, Ken Tashi, thank you so much for joining us, Campus Reform. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.